Hi. So this week we have been going over group wellness and it is a big topic. So I'm going to do a little bit of a review today. This is our last installment of this series. Today we are looking at implementation. So we've picked our initiative and now we are moving forward uh, on implementation. So we're going to talk a little bit about that. So let's dive in. Okay, so we have gone through a lot of material this week, and basically this has been all about group wellness. So if you want to go back, if this is your first video, you're going to want to go back to Monday. This is where we reviewed the definition of wellness. We talked about the wellness wheel, uh, the perception of wellness, and then we went into studies on Tuesday, we went over several studies. And so if you're interested in studies surrounding group wellness and wellness plans, I suggest information. Um, then we went over the employee experience and talked about what the ex employee experience is and what organizations benefit from improving their employee experience, which was very interesting. I really enjoyed that. And because wellness is such a huge topic, we really need to figure out our priorities and what, and of the great resignation is another topic that we talked about. I believe this was on uh, Wednesday. So with initiatives, there are so many things that you can focus on benefits. So we went over and why we even overuse term. And so assigning value to taking time, really figuring out where you're pointing your attention and all, uh, some of these resources so you can get through these initiatives. Okay, so prioritizing and getting to the bottom of that is very, very important. Okay. So we talked about trust and how that is the most important things when developing a relationship with your employees. And we talked about how wellness programs are essentially, a part of it is a marketing piece to your employees. So making sure that everything you're doing is one supporting that relationship and building trust and making sure that that is something that you have somewhat established in your organization before moving on to a project such as wellness, okay? So these are just some initiatives. We talked about the priority of the assessment, some of the questions within the assessment, and just some examples. I mean, it really um, depends on what your focus is and what the assessment is going to be, but it's just an example of a, a good place to start, okay? So what we do is we pick one initiative, one priority at a time. And as we do that, we pick the top initiative and determine the milestones. So what does that mean? And we give a realistic time for completion for each milestone in the project so that we can aggregate that and come up with a total scope of the project and how long it's realistically going to take. You basically have to chunk it down. So planning for success. Once you have one initiative, you're going to build a case, a business case. So how does this project benefit the business? So whether you're the decision maker or not, for example, if you're not the decision maker on whether or not to move forward with a project, you need to make your case to your boss as to why they should approve this project and how it's going to benefit the business. And we went over some of those earlier, but this is the case for most projects. Okay. And then stating the project objective, this is something you should be able to develop either on your own or your vendor can usually help you develop some of these as well. What are the major deliverables? Make sure you know that up front. What are the roles and responsibilities and who's going to do what? Who are the stakeholders? Who are the people involved in your project? Who's going to have, if there are any changes, who's going to have to approve those changes and so on and assumptions. Okay, so planning, basically covering what we're doing, how we do it, and when it's gonna be done. Those are the major questions that we need to answer in the planning process. Scope statement. So justifying the project, why, how, again, how is it beneficial? 
project scope, which really is focusing on what you are tackling in this initiative, okay? And making sure that you're protecting that because if it starts to grow as you introduce it to upper management and decision makers, things can, scopes can be widened and therefore the costs and the time get changed. So a lot of times you really want to focus on, get a very focused project scope and make sure everybody understands that if anything's changed from there, that time, and there's going to be other items that may change. And we'll talk about that later on, what, what can change when you change a, a project scope. What are the deliverables and the success criteria? What are we measuring? How are we going to be defining success? Uh, scope statement. So we come up with a baseline. So what is the baseline? It includes the scope statement, which includes all the items that I previously mentioned in the previous slide, the work breakdown structure, and then a dictionary, making sure that everybody understands what all the items in the WBS include and what they mean, okay? So that nobody has any assumptions that it means more than it does or less than it does, and we're meeting expectations for management. Breaking down a project into manageable pieces. So what is a work breakdown structure? It's just basically breaking things down so that you can see all the different phases of a project and then the packages associated with that. So you have a phase of a project and then underneath that, you're going to have, you're going to break it down even farther. And it's not just a fun, pretty graph or a fun, pretty infograph. It's the purpose is that you understand how much time you break it down into a way where you know how much time is going to be associated with each item in the work breakdown structure so that you know what you're committing to and the organization knows how much money they're committing to and how much resources and time are being committed to the project. And then of course, defining each item in there. So if each thing takes a week and there's 10 items, uh, we need to define uh, what each of those items are and what the purpose of those items are. If you don't know how long or how, how long it's going to take or how much it's going to cost in each phase, you have to break it down further. Okay. So for example, data gathering, you know, submitting, let's say you're setting up payroll and submitting all the information over to the new payroll company, right? How long is that going to take you? How many hours can you commit to doing it in a day? And what are the items that they need and how long is it going to take you to get each item? So if each item takes you four hours, you know, you, you, a lot of times you don't know exactly how long it's going to take you to do all the data gathering. However, if you break it down further, you can say, okay, this, this one item that they're requesting is going to take me four hours. This other item is going to take me five. This other item is going to take me, um, you know, six hours. And then once you add it all up at the bottom, maybe in an, a lot of people use Excel for this, you can say, okay, all every, all of this is going to take me 40 hours. So yeah, if I drop everything and I just commit to this, I can get it done in one week, but I can't do that because I'm the HR person and I have a new employee coming in tomorrow and I'm doing onboarding over here and we've got a lawsuit over there. So, be, so this is where you can, really get some more realistic timelines and really look at the project and how long it's really going to take and what you can commit to doing. Okay. So this is just an example. Um, this one's just for any website. I think it's a very tangible um, project that a lot of companies have looked at doing. So having a cost, everybody's seen a graph like this. Maybe you don't know it's called a cost breakdown structure, but this is called a, uh, I mean, a work breakdown structure. And so on this one, it's got concept, implementation, and marketing, and how long, and exactly what's in each category. And then there will be later on a cost and a time associated with each item. So then you can uh, throw resources at it and get your project approved and completed. Okay. 
So these are just some milestones. It's a Gantt chart. So this is to help, especially if you have multiple people working on one project, you have a vendor, you have internal staff, HR, CFO might have to be involved or financial bookkeeper might have to be involved in getting information over for certain implementations and looking at what each of those items are and how long it's going to take. Uh, of course, there can be some overlap here. You can see that these Sometimes you're juggling or multiple people are working on a project so it can get done faster. Uh, this helps lay it out so that, again, you understand exactly how long it's gonna take and those expectations are realistic. Okay, so changes. Sure, of course, there are changes every time we're going through implementation. However, you have to really protect your scope and the initiative. So basically, uh, the scope of the initiative can grow over time. So things can get added. Uh, for example, you start working on it. The CEO gets really excited about your project and starts saying, oh, can we add this? Oh, what if we added this? What if we did this? And has all these wonderful, amazing ideas. And we may want to add on those ideas. And certainly, I'm sure all of those wonderful ideas are certainly um, possible. However, there has to be an understanding that when that happens, the other it affects other items. Okay, so just go into this next couple of slides, keeping that in mind, that sometimes it's best to just keep to your original scope for your initiative, and then Add, do the add-ons after that first project is done, you know, add it to and reevaluate your priorities of your other initiatives after this one's completed. Okay, there, there is a lot of value in that. So it doesn't mean that changes don't happen. And of course, life happens and people get sick and projects get delayed. And so we always have, of course, an hypothesis, which is our, our plan on how we think everything's going to play out and work. And then we put that plan into a practice and action and we evaluate uh, at each milestone. There's, you know, we reassess the timeline, right? The timeline might change the, oh, there might be several changes and then you adjust as needed, of course. So this is just a visual of dialing things up and down and which leads me to this next. So it's called a triple constraint. So you've got quality schedule and cost. And then of course, I really like this visual because the scope is in the middle and this drives my point home where your initiative, your, your scope of your initiative needs to be protected to some some extent, especially if you are not the decision maker and you have other decision makers involved or you're not the primary decision maker, there's other decision makers involved. Everybody needs to understand that if the quality is changed, if the schedule is changed um, or the cost is changed, it's all going to impact the rest of the project. And of course, if the scope gets bigger, all these other triangles get bigger, right? And get adjusted. So when you increase quality, um, it puts pressure on the scope or and affects schedule and costs. Um, when you increase the project budget, it decreases pressure on scope and or quality. If you have more money, you will be able, you could possibly improve the quality, correct? Uh, increasing the allowable product project time can reduce pressure on your scope. Uh, improve quality or cost, right? If you're given more time to do maybe a couple of more of the items on your own, rather than hiring someone else to do it for you, it might take you longer to personally do it, but it's going to, could bring their soft costs. Of course, you're still being paid for your time and, and other, it's, you're taking your attention away from other things. Um, but I think you catch my drift. So this is a nice visual to bring home that point. And then of course, when there is a change, the triple constraint has to be communicated, right? What is it affecting? How is this change affecting the quality, the, the time spent on the project and the cost? And who is involved in approving that change? And when that change is approved, yeah, 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 I wanna add that. Uh, yeah, 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 we wanna throw that into our new software system. We wanna do this. We want this extra feature, right? Okay, well, um, that's going to take an extra four weeks to implement. We might need to backtrack a little bit. And then you also, 
there's probably a cost associated with that. So that then has to get approved and go through a process as well and be communicated clearly to keep the project or the initiative moving forward, correct? Okay, so there's a timeline created so that everybody understands exactly where we are in the process and the time in which it's going to take. It's just a nice snapshot of where, how long the entire initiative will take and each phase of the initiative, right? So now we've gone through the implementation process. We've done all of the different phases of the initiative, depending on what you choose, right? So you choose in your assessment, you go through questionnaires and really hone down on what your priorities are. And then as we wrap up, the program is implemented or the onboarding process is complete and everybody thinks they're done. However, there are always wrap up items. So there's wrap up admin, such as signing off on the completion of the project. Uh, may, there might be a final audit included or some sort of legal and compliance paperwork that needs to be sent out to employees and the like. Then you, of course you have final procurements. There may be vendors out there that need a final payment. So you wanna make sure all that is wrapped up before you just close it, uh, close it down. And you want to reflect, take time to reflect, do lessons learned, and of course, celebrate. So congratulations, you've completed your first initiative. And um, I hope that you found this valuable. I've got some links down below uh, for examples on uh, questionnaires and assessments. And of course, if there's anything else that you're having trouble, there's a contact form below as well. And I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Please like and subscribe, make a comment, and be sure to share this with someone that you that will find this valuable. We will see you.